everyone. Today, uh, very lucky we are with Chloe Pickford. Uh, hello, Chloe. Hi, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad at all. I must say, I've got a bit of an apology. I've got a graze all over my face from rugby yesterday and one of the worst tans you will ever see. And actually, Chloe, you're looking there. I don't know if you're fake tanning or you've been on the beach, but you look uh, you look pretty brown and I look pretty pasty compared to you. Yeah, I'm quite olive skin, so I went to the beach yesterday, so I've talked up my tan. Yeah, well, you're really showing me up, that's for sure. <laughs> Chloe, I mean, I know that you train like an absolute machine. I've seen a lot of the uh, the videos that you produce, so I was keen to talk a little bit about kind of your training, but I think format-wise, if we have a chat, let our audience get to know you a bit, and then we're going to do our kind of our, our famous quick fire questions and put you under a bit of pressure. Five minutes on the clock and just bombard you with questions left, right, and centre. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so in terms of getting to know you, then, so um, I mean, one, one thing I think we could post to start is you are officially a, a competitor. Mm -hmm. What what category do you compete in? So previous to well, next year when I step on stage, um, I'm going into a category called wellness. Okay. And then previous to that, I was doing figure, um, which I don't know if you know the difference between the categories, but generally figure, they are, first of all, the posing is different completely. Yep. And they want a balance between the upper half and the lower half. Whereas through competing, like I've done really well. So like my last time competing in 2018, I uh, got made British champion, um, which was, you know, amazing. But I kind of felt like my strengths kind of lie on my lower body. And so we were kind of having to always worry about my lower getting too big, but genetically, like my legs just like to grow. Yeah. Um, so I took some time away from stage, did some reflecting. I thought, look, where do I want to go with this? And I thought, you know what? I think wellness, which is a new category really, um, would suit me so much more. And so I've been training for that and my body has changed so much. And it just, I feel better, like I feel so much yeah, that's yeah. part of the name isn't it wellness is it's about feeling and looking well um i mean in terms of then say you, your target body fat percentage is is there there's quite big differences between the different categories so what what would you be aiming for for say the wellness category so we don't not like in bodybuilding we don't necessarily like measure body fat as such we go by visuals yeah. some people might do but i never have in all of my clients or anyone i've worked with um so the figure girls, they get really lean. So like you're allowed sort of feathered glutes and like really, really lean legs and like yeah. basically just so lean. And that's kind of how I got in 2018. Um, but with the wellness, they want you to look kind of lean up top, but you do still need to be shredded, don't get me wrong. Yeah, sure. um, but your legs don't need to be like so like diced, you know, like when you see loads and loads of lines in girls' legs or guys' legs. Personally as well, I prefer the wellness look. Um, I think it looks, well, competing is not healthy, it, it's an extreme sport, but yeah. I think as a look, it looks healthier than when someone's just completely shredded. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that. And in terms of kind of your, your focus now, so I know you've taken a bit of time off from a kind of competing perspective, but you're currently in a, a build phase. And I think building for women, some women certainly sounds quite scary because yeah. the idea of building is growing. And a lot of kind of saying your, your average person are, looking to lose a bit of weight, tone up a little bit, but actually that build phase is really important for you to put on the muscle. But what does a build phase look like? What does it mean for you? So it's just like really being in calorie surplus for a number of months or over a period of time. Um, and it's just trying to bring up your weaker areas um, in the time frame that you're working with. So it is, it can be quite hard for girls to kind of get their head around because it's yeah, kind of mentally, it, even the word build or in guys terms, it yeah. might say bulk. Bulk is a terrifying word, I think, for a lot of people. But I, I think that was build, terrifying. Build's more I, positive, I'd say. Yeah, I just say off season or like improvement phase. Yeah. I think when you say bulk, it's like, oh God, it's a bit scary. Yeah. You're gonna get massive. Um, yeah, and it's really hard for, as you know, the female to kind of accept that you're gonna gain body fat, but when you sort of accept that, the process becomes so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Um, what sort of calories are you on now? Well, in this heat, I'm struggling to eat. I'm not going to lie. Like it's, so, I don't know about you, but I struggle to eat in the heat. My appetite just goes. Um, but training day, 3,200, I bumped it up to because I was kind of like staying around like 73 kilos and I'm looking quite lean for an off season. So I bumped them up to 3,200 from 3,000. And then my rest day calories are quite a lot lower. So they're 2,400. 
Okay. Uh, but just because. of those, that's not, that's a very comfortable amount of calories. And that, when you're doing yeah. 3,200, even when it's not quite as hot, do you ever struggle to get those calories in? Do you know what? I have been in the circuit for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, and I am struggling, like, well, there will be days when I'm hungrier, but it's, I can't say it's really, really easy. Like, it's not consistently really easy. Yeah. Do, do you have to adjust your calories? So as you build, and if you're putting on, say, one or two kilograms, your metabolic rate adapts and it grows as you're kind of increasing more and more muscle mass. Do you have to then up the calories again? And then you kind of continually fight to, to shovel down more food? Yeah, well, so the way I kind of see it is that if you're sort of looking quite lean and you're losing weight a bit or you're staying at the same weight, you, you could get, you know, some pushing more body fat, then I'll just increase it then. So what you don't want to be doing is dropping too much weight in an off season. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I mean, the body kind of needs that food to build. So it's yeah. just about battery. I mean, everyone is different. This is the thing in the sport. Like every person is so different. It's very individualized. So. Do you, do you, have you worked with many people where they're doing a kind of a build phase, they put on say three, four, five, six kilograms, which is almost all healthy, healthy weight, but they kind of start to feel a little bit too bulky or that naturally you're putting a little bit of body fat with that and you then recommend a, a mini cut? Is that something that you've, you've done a lot? Yeah, so like recomp phases, which are really, really good because last time I did a recomp phase, I lost six kilos and ever since then my body's been really um, responsive with food. So I've stayed in a reasonably good shape. Um, it's quite good for a kind of mental break as well if you're kind of constantly yeah. having to hammer that food and it gets a bit hot or you've got a holiday coming up touch wood we can all go on holiday again but um a little kind of recomp or a, a mini cup for that um can be quite yeah good. it gets appetite firing back up you know it's quite a lot when you're having to constantly eat hot food it's it can get quite like oh god this is so long but it's part and parcel of the process but yeah. i'm kind of i'm a bit over it now yeah but your your intention yeah. is then to, to compete again and when you competed yeah. before, I mean, you, you got into to a phenomenal shape and I think you've touched on it, but would you say that was healthy? Because I think oh, it's God, really good to be transparent about that it's not necessarily a, a big health push. It's just how do you manipulate your body to kind of get to a slightly unhealthily low body fat percentage? And it's, it's incredible work, but it's not yeah. very quite you. It doesn't want to do that, does it? No, and as a female, again, it's really... It can be quite scary. Like females do need to be aware of these kind of things when you start competing. Like I lose my menstrual mm. cycle for five or six months. Yeah. Um, and that's like clockwork. As soon as I start dieting, it we have gone within the first six weeks. And yeah. then I'll keep competing and then it'll come back within the first month of finish competing. So but it is a very extreme sport and the prep side is far from healthy. Yeah. You know, it's just you like find your your energy levels were reducing as well because I know your body can when you're at that say it's a low level of calories or your body fat gets so low, your kind of neat, your non-exercise side of things actually starts to really kind of ramp down, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I can, the best way I can describe it is you're walking through honey every day. Really? Literally like, or when you've done like, you know, when you finish um, like a running race, like a sprint or a marathon or whatever, and the last, that last final stretch, you're like trying to get everything out and you feel exhausted. I think that's kind of how it feels as well. Well, I know it's time for run through honey when you're hungry as well. I mean, the smell of honey can't be. Can't be. <laughs> I know everything smells so amazing. Yeah. But it's just like when I was competing 2018, I was doing one to one PT a lot more than I am now. Um, I was also teaching classes at Dickie Fitness and I was doing online coaching. So I was just like, I mean, I looked awful. I looked horrendous. And it actually isn't until now I look back at pictures and I realize there's a reason why people kept stopping me saying, Are you okay? Like, so you, 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 you exactly. look bad in the, in the face, as in you look kind of cool and energy. Yeah, okay. so I had like, um, my cheeks were just really pulled in. My yeah. whole face was just, I looked horrendous. And when I diet down, like some people don't lose it from their face loads and loads. I mean, 80% do, but some people don't. And so they kind of look like, well, they look healthier. But I just, it goes from my face straight away. Um, yeah. I was tiny, I was so tiny, but... It, like if you look at my stage pictures when I'm posing, like I'm doing my front pose, I look like so massive and powerful and really healthy, but actually under that tan, I am not at all. Yeah, <laughs> it's good as well, because I think when you are in that kind of that, that lower body fat percentage, you're maybe feeling like you said, you're walking through honey and it's difficult, but then you've got your kind of support network that are actually saying, this isn't healthy, you look bad, you don't look well. Yeah. Unless you say it further adds to that pressure, and that, that kind of challenge. It's really hard, because I had a boyfriend at the time as well, and 
I didn't sleep in the same bed as him for like eight weeks because he kept snoring and it woke me up. And when you're competing and like the closer you get to your competitions, you get so hungry and your body just, it never like switches off. It's really weird. So you barely sleep. We yeah. do sleep, but it's not like nice deep sleep. Yeah, and so like I was just getting woken up by him. So I slept in a different room for like eight weeks. I mean, that on a relationship is hard. Yeah. Not- together anymore, there we go. <laughs> We need everyone to um, kind of almost opt in and say, look, my wife, husband, whoever it is, you need to be ready for this. I don't need yeah, to. Yeah, you know what? Stuff. Going out with a competitor, it's it's really, really difficult because it's not only is it, you know, I mean, the off season, I'm quite relaxed in the off season um, because, well, I've been away from stage for quite a long time now. So I kind of feel like I live quite a normal life. Yeah. But like, it's just really hard for your partner to kind of see you go through such an extreme kind of prep and your mood changes, yeah. you need your sex drive. And can you imagine like being on the receiving end of that, like your partners want to have sex with you. And it's like, well, actually it's not because it's anything to do with you. Yeah. It's like your libido goes. And that's, that's the reality of prep. And you've got to, when people come to me and they want to compete, I have to tell them all these things because they are really, really important to know. Let's talk about that actually then. So Chloe, you've, you've clearly got a hell of a lot of experience from kind of both sides, whether it's getting down super lean, building, move more into kind of the wellness side of things there it's great to have that rounded experience in all those areas mm. but when you're kind of you're, you're actively training people is it online coaching that you tend to do is there a certain type of customer client that you'd you'd like to work with the most yeah so um i do well if someone wants to book in personal training with me they can like they can just message me but obviously i'm now based in oxford yeah. uh, and as long as they can come to me that's fine but i don't openly like advertise support like one-to-one anymore just because you can't do like everything because you're just going to get like pulled from pillar to post you can't be a jack of all trades although pt is similar to online coaching you can't put in 100 percent to pt 100 percent to online coaching all of your instagram like all the marketing that goes with it yeah. so um yeah so like all my work is basically now online coaching um and i've got an array of clients i've got lifestyle clients i've got people that compete um, and I've got a photo shoot prep clients as well. Yeah, so that's that a CP12, isn't it? Yeah, so I was going to launch that, and I didn't end up really launching it. Um, I really like the uh, Yeah, it was really funny actually, because I thought there would be like a whole load of interest, but I got people joining my one to one coaching. But I think I think the dates weren't right for people. So um, to kind of un- unpack that clue, because I know obviously I'm aware of it, but CP12 as a kind of a concept was a. A photo shot like a photo challenge in the yes it's going to be a photo shoot challenge itself um but i actually do photo shoots with individuals as well so i take them through a photo shoot prep and i coach them one-to-one um so powerful it sounds so silly but being committed on a date to have a photo shoot just gives so much focus and i think for a lot of people certainly when they're first getting into things they say right well if i'm just indefinitely training hard and eating carefully I'm just never, never going to be able to do that. But I go, I've got a 12-week block or a 16-week block or whatever block you work to. They've got a clear end goal in mind. And, and in that time, they form healthy habits. And actually, yeah, exactly. you know what? I've come so far. I can see the before. I can see the after. I've absolutely smashed it. And actually, I'm really enjoying it. I'm full of energy. Actually, it's not been that difficult to cut out these bad foods and to be consistent. I think it's a really nice way to, to do it. And just provides yeah, it a level of about, You know, people come to you, they want to lose weight. Well, obviously not everyone wants to compete and that's fine. Like I wouldn't expect everyone to compete because it's so extreme. But yeah. I always say to people, you know, if you really want to get in shape, you want to get lean and you want to kind of showcase what you've achieved and what you've done, a photo shoot is amazing because there's no pressure. No one's watching you. No one's judging you. Well, I mean, I'm watching my client, but no one's judging you and like marking you down your body. You go and see a photographer. You can do shots, you know, whatever shots you want. It could be lifestyle. It could be in the gym. Yeah. Wear whatever you want, change the outfits. And it's so powerful. And I think it's just such a powerful day and I think everyone should kind of try and do a photo shoot and that's kind of what I've said to my clients you know some of my clients that have done photo shoots they never thought they'd step in front of the camera yeah. but they smashed it and they looked amazing so I think it's nice to have that sort of end goal after a diet yeah. yeah. and a lot of people when they first start off maybe that they're not in kind of what they would deem to be photo shoot shape yeah. but this is all about stepping outside your comfort zone and I think if you've got a client that's happy to say look this is me as I am right now and be kind of brave enough to kind of say, look, I'm not in the perfect shape, but they're then working towards something. That for you must kind of be a signal that look, they, they mean business. They're happy yeah. to go outside their comfort zone and work hard. Yeah, exactly. 
Cool. And are you looking for or open to online clients now? If we have a, an influx, yeah. the, the recharge following to kind of say, oh, we'd love to work with you. Yeah, no. So I do have spaces open for my coaching at the moment. Um, so if anyone is interested, then yeah, there's a process that I follow. There's um, what I get people to do is follow the link in my Instagram bio. Yeah. And it takes to my form and then my calendar and stuff. So they can book in through there. Cool. Um, but yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, we'll tag you and people can definitely yeah, click and yeah, get in touch if, if they'd like to. Right, are you ready for the, the quick fire round, Chloe? Okay, go ahead. Let me get my timer on. We've got a few minutes. I'm ready, press, ready, steady. Favourite post-gym meal? Oh, my God. Nothing. Gonna get, it's it's going to be a quick fire. Depends what meal I'm in, but I have cocoa pops and whey protein. That's so nice. Uh, you, what you make, how, okay, how do you do that? Because I've got cocoa pops and I've got protein powder, but I've never combined the two. Do you shake okay. up first, pour on top? Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, nice. I mean, I think um, this is quick fire. I'm waffling, but I think cereals are actually quite a good pro post workout meal for me. Yeah. I always want to find, yeah, just a quick release. Cool. Uh, Favourite calorie tracking tool, providing that you track, which I assume you do. My fitness pal. It's simple, isn't it? It's brilliant. What do you say to uh, mainly females that are scared to lift heavy because they're going to bulk too big, too quick? Uh, first of all, it's really hard to gain muscle and looking strong females is such a nice look anyway so agree that's something that i always find difficult because I, I think there's a misconception that you literally spend a week in the gym do a few reps and suddenly i wish, on it. I wish it was that easy yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, who would you out of everyone you've got connection wise who's the best person to follow on social media big question but there's there's different people that you would follow well, for different reasons just one person just one person shout someone out God. I don't even know there's too many. Just give me one. I think Amelia Thompson would be really good. Amelia Thompson. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I know that's difficult. I just want to kind of put you under the pressure. If you're only allowed to do one gym exercise for the rest of your life, what are you choosing? Uh, hip thrust. I think you're going to go for a big compound move, but hip thrust. Good fun. Cool. Uh, who do you know? And this is another difficult one in terms of people. One single person that trains the hardest in the gym that you know, you can't say yourself. Ooh. Oh. That's very hard. Male or female, does it matter? It doesn't matter. This is actually really hard. It's My pretty... coach is pretty, like, savage in the gym, to be honest. Who's that? My coach, Callum, he's, like, really savage. But to be honest, everyone I train with, they all train really hard. Yeah. Is that your influence or is that how they naturally are? They just work hard generally. They just work hard generally. <laughs> um, best glute building exercise? Um, so I really, well, there's, can I just say two or not? Just yeah, yeah. We'll, let, we'll, let, we'll let you have two. So the abduction machine. Yeah. It's really, really good. And yeah. also just like that glute drive I said earlier, the hip thrust machine, um, I think is just amazing. So. Yeah, definitely. What's the single biggest reason you see people fail in terms of their body goals? Um, quick fixes. They try and look for the quick fix and they don't invest like time into it. Yeah, just... people can spend two years gaining weight and they expect to, to lose it within four weeks and it just it just isn't that simple, is it? What's your weakest lift? At the moment, actually, I would say my RDL has got rubbish. Okay. What's that? <laughs> Okay. Fine. Um, yeah. I did it so long in my program. Really um, I just feel like it's just plateaus. Yeah. It's really plateaued. There was a point where it was really strong, but I think I've actually taken it out now and we're doing stiff legs with uh, yeah. dumbbells instead. Nice. It's a good stretch on that as well. Um, what's uh, the muscle you're most proud of for yourself? My, well, overall, my legs. There we go. I was, I was going to ask for a, a tense, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> Favourite snack. Sorry, I think I lost Favorite you. Favourite pleasure snack. So it could be a little bit naughty. Oh, I love McDonald's. Do you? Love McDonald's is sushi, but the thing is, for me, I don't ever label good like foods good or bad. Yes. I'm very much a coach that's very like okay, you can have what you want within reason. Obviously, if someone is taking the hit, then obviously not. But like when you're tracking, you should be able to. Right, flexible dieting. So you've got your own. Yeah, flexible dieting and. Yeah. Making sure you're 
things you enjoy every single day and you're not like just eating that out of Tupperware and chicken and broccoli. That's just so boring. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, what supplements do you take? So I am taking creatine, uh, which is goes well, five grams in my intra workout drink. Um, and also on rest days when I remember. Um, essential amino acids and I have carb powder as well with that. I have whey protein, omega-3s and a multivitamin. Yep. And then our G vitamin D between the months of October through to April. With your creatine, do you cycle on and off or do you just keep it on? No. Just keep it going. Yeah. Well, we've got 10 seconds left. Let me get two more questions in. Uh, celebrity physique goals. What celebrity do you think has got a cracking body? Male or female? Do you know what? That's such a good question. There's so, again, there's so many people. But my, can I just say I'm my crush? Because I'm obsessed with it. Do that, do that. You know, Callum, Callum, is it Bo Moga or Von Moga? I can't remember. No idea who that is. Oh, do you not know who it is? Oh, oh, Australian guy. Australia. Yeah, top, top form. Okay. Oh, Fun. Um, what do you say to, um, this is largely based at females, but that are on less than, say, 1,200 calories a day? Because I see that quite a lot and I, I don't necessarily think it's the best. It's, it depends on like, it does depend on their circumstances and their physique and a lot of things. Um, but I think, I think like you said, like girls think they need to be eating under 1200 calories to, to lose weight. And actually, sometimes when you increase your calories, you have more energy. So your expenditure increases, you move more, your steps increase just because you've got more energy. You expend more in the gym. Um, you're putting more effort in your workouts. You'll see better results. So I think it's just, you need to ask yourself what your goal is. Is it working for you now? Why is it not working for you? And go from there. But you should never feel like you should have to eat a little amount of food to get to where you want to be. Lovely. Right. It's been an absolute pleasure, Chloe. Uh, yeah, appreciate the chat. I think you've dropped a lot of uh, insights all over the shop. So uh, thank you. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day, all right? Thank you. Take care. Bye.